pristine demon street. I am condemned to live here, to suffer on this earth forever, as a punishment for my crime. It is said that no greater outrage was ever committed by any mortal. <laughs> but should I find a crime more terrible than mine, my punishment will end. A piece of ice, a murderer's weapon. There you are, my judges and my jury. I was expecting you. This world is evil. So are you. So is everybody. Now you come along with me and judge for yourselves whether the crime you're about to witness is not worse than mine. A small mining town where people lived uneventful lives for hundreds of years. Every day was like the previous day but on this particular day, something occurred which had never happened in the history of Torsholm. Hey, Knut. Look. Ice. Looks like we hit the glacier. That's the end of the shaft. We can't blast it out. It might reach miles into the mountain. Shall we abandon the tunnel? I don't see what else we can do. I'd better phone the office. Hey, Knut. What is it? There. There's something there. An animal frozen in the ice. A mammoth. No, it isn't that big. It doesn't look like an animal to me. Yes, that's what it is. Let's blast it out. No, I'd better phone the scientists. Let them have a look at it. You know what it looks like? Don't say it. I think I'm seeing the same thing. writing the report? Yes, we'll need it for the Anthropological Congress in September, just in case we lose the object. But how can we lose it? All right, carry on. Human being 50,000 years old. It could be the link between ape and man. I want to get the block of ice transported to the museum intact. frozen completely naked. This I have to see. The gun in ice. To think that she died thousands of years ago. She looks alive. How beautiful she is. Well, we certainly have here an object of scientific importance which will stun the anthropological world. 
But how do we get her out? Melt the ice? I would suggest chiseling her out, and the cold would preserve her. No! Sven, what is it? You must not take a risk and harm her. Of course not. I'll be taking care of her and see that the temperature is kept at 20 below. I'll be in charge. Why you? I'm the anthropologist here. And you know that my research pertains to any kind of petrified historic man? As the anthropologist at this museum, she belongs to my department. I don't want to be cheated out of an important research like this. Cheated! Gentlemen, please, let me decide who will be in charge. My, my training, my experience, it's my duty to science. No, Sven, Dr. Olson is right. She belongs to the science of anthropology. He is an expert on the subject. I think we should have a surgeon brought in to dissect her. Dissect her? I don't understand your attitude. This prehistoric body is an object of science, not an exhibition for the curious. How do you plan to go about getting her out, Dr. Olson? I think I'll increase the temperature in this room. The ice will slowly melt and become transparent. And uh, then we can study her better. But everybody will see her in her nakedness. Why not? Why shouldn't we see her in her nakedness? When were you born? How many millenniums before my time? What was your name? Your name? Was it Cordelia? Angelica? Are you an angel to return to this earth? Two people are destined for each other. You and I. You had to return to come to me, Angelica. I knew when I first saw you that we were chosen for each other. Only time stood between us. <laughs> what is time but a conception of man? I have to get you out of your prison to hold you in my arms. I love you, Angelica. Seastrom! What are you doing here? The same as you. Did Dr. Holm make it clear to you that this is my research, not yours? I know that you want to cheat me out of the fruits of my lifelong work. You have no right. I have the same right to be here as you, Olson. I'm going to report you to Dr. Holm. I want him to tell you that you can't get in here. I understand your feeling. And your scientific curiosity. All right. I forget that we met here. If you promise not to come here again. She is mine. Of course. Of course. Now, now let's, let's go out together. Eh? Leave the lady alone. What do you have in mind? What are you going to do to her? You'll make her suffer. You talk as if she were alive. But don't you see? No, of course you don't see. She is alive. But that's not possible. By gradually lowering the temperature, a body can slowly be frozen without terminating life. How long can the body stay in a suspended state? One year, a century, a millennium? Who says it cannot? I know she's alive. Yeah. She looks alive. Shall we go? I know what you have in mind. You want to get me out of here. You want to make it impossible for me to see her. That's not true. Then prove it. Turn this research, as you call it, over to me. She's more to me than she is to you. She's not an object of vivisection. Come to your senses, Seastrom. Will you? That's enough. Now let's get out of here.
Dr. Olson did not show up this morning. I phoned his home, but he didn't sleep there last night. What do you think has happened? Well, I don't know. I know almost nothing about Dr. Olson's private life. He might show up today, maybe tomorrow. Well, what about the girl in the ice? Well, that's why I called you. We must keep the find a secret until the day when we have gathered enough scientific information about this body. Otherwise, I'm afraid we'll be overrun with reporters and zealous anthropologists. Oh, I agree with you, Dr. Hove. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Dr. Seastrom, I want you to find out how we can free her from her icy surroundings without damage to her body. Yes, sir. Then I will be in charge. Yes. Under one condition. Yes. Since I will be responsible, I also need the authority that goes with a job like this. Oh, I understand. I want everybody checking with me first. No one is allowed entrance to the room without first having it cleared through me. That sounds reasonable. No one. Not even you. Why are you restricting me, too? Only for a short time. It would give me peace of mind. All right. Ben? Oh, still in bed? I had a headache. Aren't you going to kiss me? Did you have a busy morning? Not more than usual. What did you do? Cataloging at the museum. You came home rather late at night the last few nights. Did you do cataloging all that time? Why do you ask? Must be dull doing cataloging for weeks and months. I'm glad you could find the time to come home today for lunch. What are you talking about? What are you doing at the ice house? You're spying on me? Yes. I've been watching you the last two days. I've spent hours in front of the ice house. You see how silly I am? I suspected you had a girlfriend. I thought, Sven does not like me anymore. He has a girl hidden, whom he meets in the morning, the afternoon. And at night, when the sun is sinking, at the blue hour, he makes love to her. I hate you for spying on me. It's a compliment when a woman thinks her husband is cheating on her. It proves that she is jealous. When a woman is jealous, she's in love. Isn't that true? I don't want you to watch me. I thought at first that you were meeting a girl in front of the ice house. Strange place for a rendezvous. But for days I saw only men going in and coming out. Inga, I don't want you to watch me ever again. 
Understand? How can I help it? You don't ever tell me where you are going or what you are doing. I want to be your wife, not just legally. I want to share your life, be your confidant. Why do you hate me so much? I hate you? Look at your face in the mirror. You hated when I'm embracing you. You haven't touched me since you came back from that trip up north to Tushom. What is it, Sven? What have I done? You haven't done anything. Then what is it? What are you doing at the ice house every day? What is there that interests you so much? I'm working on a secret project. Now, are you satisfied? What has come between us? I want to be left alone. Get a divorce, anything, just leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with you nor anybody else. Inga, I don't want to hurt you. But you see it? No, I don't see! And that was the last time you saw Dr. Olson? Yes, I'm sure of it. You said you couldn't detect anything extraordinary in his behavior, no sign that he was upset. No, I didn't. Did you, Dr. Lund? Well, we were all somewhat excited, I would say, and we still are. Excited? About what? This has nothing to do with Olson's disappearance, I assure you. Please, let me be the judge of that. We brought in an anthropolithic object. I put Olson in charge of it. That excited him, I assume. An anthropolithic object? Yes, the science of anthropology deals with human bodies petrified by the action of calcareous waters, preserving or freezing in a state which does not deteriorate the body, in contrast to anthropology, which is the science of man in general. You lost me, Dr. Hove. Now, where is that object? In the ice house. Well, then Dr. Olson might be there. No, Dr. Seastrom, who's working there, did not see him. Dr. Seastrom? Who is he? I put him in charge of the anthropolithic object after Olson's disappearance. Now we're getting closer. It is pretty, isn't it? I want you to wear it. Here are the shoes. I know they'll fit you. Only a few feet of ice are separating us, Angelica. A few inches of frozen water. But you can see me. Can you hear me talk? I knew you were alive. I knew it. You want me to hold you in my arms? I'm going to get you out. Now, soon you will be free. How many thousands of years were you waiting for this day, Angelica? And yet you would have waited another 10,000 years for me, wouldn't you? I might have lived in your time, might have died young, before our love was fulfilled. If I had only the memory of this time, I would have known that I vowed to meet you again on this earth. When I first saw you, I recognized you instantly. Your name came back to me. I remembered your tender embraces, your soft lips. Now you've come back to me. You, you, you're going. 
on a tron. a crime of passion, of cruelty, a man becoming a murderer for the love of a dead woman. 